Okay, so first thing we gotta do is mask everything off, get the walls and ceiling masked off, because we definitely don't want paint in our popcorn ceiling. As far as the layout of the trees and the hills, I looked at the original and sort of just wanted to give the same look and feel. I didn't want to duplicate it exactly because the dimensions didn't fit our wall. So you can see I'm just kind of adding hills to the sides because I want the feature of the house to be, you know, the main focus in the center. For the paint, I went to Home Depot and got samples of each color that I wanted. I just got my original image, kind of tried to section off each color and see how much of each color there was and sort of narrow it down to maybe like eight colors total. And from there I could mix them and create some of these custom colors. Like for example, that round hill on the right side wasn't a color that I originally bought. I just mixed some of the orange I had with the yellow, which is tricky because you can't come back later and match that color. So you gotta make sure you get everything right on that first go. I did the trees on the right freehand, didn't like how they looked, so I went over and taped, taped up some s nice crispy trees over them. That's kind of the nice thing about paint is every brush is also a nice hand. So one of the other things I like to do is when I'm making these bigger trees using the leftover paint to go through and add some details and matching colors and not waste those big amounts of paint since I was fairly limited since I'm just using sample sizes here. Each one's like half quart or something like that. The other thing you got to make sure you do is save your paint chips when you go get to paint because inevitably you'll run out of one color and need to go get more. And if you don't remember which shade of orange or sherbet or whatever you got, you're gonna have a hard time matching it. itself I didn't want to try and make a grid or chart or measure things to get it exactly perfect and I love the design of it so I traced it onto transparency paper so I could project it up on the wall with this overhead projector that I was graciously gifted by my friend. And here I'm showing you know, here's here's our image here's our overlay here's the line work essentially and what I also did was go through in Photoshop and grab out each color, including the shades of each color, and just to kind of plan out the order that I was going to do here to try and save some paint and use my time efficiently. So once we got the house sized up and projected on the wall in the right proportions I liked, it was time to get started. through after I decided the position I taped the projector down to the floor make sure it wouldn't move at all because this is a multi-day process and I masked off each color and painted in the shades from brightest to darkest or most saturation to most color tint I guess if that makes sense This is kind of a tricky process because you can't block the projection while you're tracing it. So you kind of have to awkwardly stand off to the side. Then I turned off the projector to just make sure that I had nice consistency of paint application, nice good edges, etc., etc. et, cetera, et cetera. And then I had to wait for each color to dry before going through and masking the next one off because a lot of the colors either overlap each other or butt right up against each other. It's a very time consuming process, but if you take the time to do it right, it comes out really nice. 
Going through and adding the black line work to the house was a big step, really adds, you know, some definition to what we're doing here. And there it is. This was a big step for the project. It really got over the hump once the house was in there. And it's not done yet by any means, but we're well on our way now. So for this little road going in, I tried to duplicate the original drawing, got a little over, over heavy handed with it and made it a little wider than I expected, but we're gonna block it with some posts later. It's okay. Everything's fixable. Going through adding our walls and posts, I did the bricks on the wall freehand. Later I came up with the solution to doing straight lines freehand, which we'll see. Getting that curve in there, making sure that the curve wasn't the exact same colors as any other things in the drawing it was tricky because I was running out of colors at this point. So I got my sidewalks lines in, wasn't happy with them, so I made this ruler, which is spaced up from the wall ever so slightly so that the marker won't bleed underneath like it would on a normal ruler. I just cut this on my table saw real quick. Went through and fixed all my sidewalk lines and it made a huge difference. The original lines were pretty straight, but now they are dead straight. And we get into what's probably my favorite part, going through and adding all the little details. I didn't follow a plan for any of these, I just tried to space them evenly while still communicating that there were leaves there. Didn't want to overdo it. What I like a lot about the original image is that it there's a lot going on, but it doesn't feel messy or overly busy. It's really easy to get carried away with that step. Adding my light post. Wasn't happy with the masking job I did, so I went through with a brush, and that light post got about 15% bigger, but had nice clean edges. Going through and adding the tiles to the roof, the details to the house that are all in this red color I did with a Posca marker paint pen. I was really having fun with it, so I kinda added some more details than were in the original drawing, I added some highlights that I enjoyed. It was a lot of fun. And so I followed the same process for the power lines in the tree, tracing them on some transparency paper, because I didn't want to try and exactly do, or, you know, come up with a duplication just by eyeballing it. The issue I had was with this process though, was that I had made the house as large as possible when I made the transparency to make it fit. And because I did two other pieces that weren't in that same scale they didn't really fit on here when i projected them but i got the power line to work sorry about the uh, projector arm being in the way here freehanded those power lines that was the most nerve-wracking part of this whole project and for the tree i just kind of measured where it was on the drawing it's mostly straight lines so i, I felt okay freehanding that going through and adding the leaves once again trying to do as few as possible while still communicating what we're trying to communicate. Really, really not trying to overdo it. Added a couple more details to the tree with that green Posca marker and it was done. Very satisfying to go through and pull the last pieces of blue tape off and be done with this project. It was about 60 hours total. Uh, maybe about a hundred bucks worth of paint samples and probably also a hundred bucks worth of blue tape But I'm very satisfied with the results uh, Please leave a comment below if you have any questions or comments and thank you for watching